Hi, I'm Lee from MIDI. Today we're going to give you some outstanding tips, including my number one tip for catching in the cold weather. My first tip is swim management. I see a lot of anglers going too far to start their match. I see some anglers starting at 14 and a half metres, some at 16 metres. I start a little bit closer, so I've got that room to go a little bit further later on in the match, which gives me more fish to go out in my mind. Bear in mind, it's cold, so you're not really going to catch a lot of fish short to start with. You may do at the end, but not at the start. So start at a line you're happy with. Obviously, wind and conditions will play a big part in that. I generally like to start at sort of 11 to 13 metres. That way then, I've got another couple of sections that I can add to get to my ultimate or the end of where you're allowed to fish at a 16 meter range basically a lot of lot of fisheries have a 16 meter rule 16 meters is a long way you can catch a lot of fish at 13 meters trust me if you haven't got a 16 meter pole and you only have a 13 meter pole then start that little bit closer to yourself you can always move out and chase the fish out because invariably that's what always happens during the winter time they move out they just back off slightly all the time. So always leave yourself somewhere to go. Okay, so my second tip today is, is to fish as light as possible. And by, by meaning as light as possible, I don't just mean hook lengths, I mean float wise. So coming from the top, we're fishing a 12 to 16 elastic. Now that might sound very heavy to some people, but trust me, because of the depth of the water, if you were fishing a, a lighter elastic, you would be stripping elastic out of the end of your pole because the depth of the water, I mean, we're fishing in six foot of water here at the moment, and the further out you go, the deeper it gets. So like I said, we're starting at 12, with a 12 to 16 elastic. We're coming down to 018 through the crystal line, low vis stuff. We got one of the flexi wire floats. Now this is a four by 14. It might sound very light, and, and in all fairness it is. For the depth of water we're fishing, it is very, very light, but it's very, very stable as well. Couple that with, like I said, our 018 line, and we come down to our shotting pattern. Now our shotting pattern dictates what we're trying to do fishing-wise. So we're trying to catch sort of on the settle today. Most of our bites have come lifting and dropping, so we don't really need a tight bulk. We need a nice spread out bulk, four or five number nines, down in the bottom third of the rig. And then we're coming down to a 012 hook length, which is sort of like three and a half pound, to a KM1 with a band. Experience of this lake has taught me that fishing soft baits like expanders, maggots, it's futile really, because there's so many small skimmers in here that you just get overtaken by them. So fishing a hard pellet or a piece of corn, even punch bread, can work very, very well. I think if we were fishing any heavier today, like 4.16s or a 4.18s, for example, in that depth of water, yes, you'd see your bites, but you're missing out on a lot of bites. Some of the bites we've had today have been unreal. They've been tiny, tiny little movements, tiny little dinks. Even the cameraman couldn't believe that that was a bite. Like I said, if we were fishing any heavier, I don't think that we would see as many bites as we're having. Fish as light as you can, obviously for the conditions, and you won't go far wrong. Okay, so my third tip, and it's a very, very important tip, is feeding. Now, 99% of people 
fish with pots. Whether they're tapping in micros, maggots, pellets, you know, four mil pellets, that kind of thing. They're very, very important which pot you choose. Now we have a selection of these at Midi and feeding four fish varies from fishery to fishery. Like I said earlier on about this place, it's got loads and loads and loads of skimmers in it. So it's primarily, most people fish corn or pellets. Very rarely see people catching long with maggots unless it's really, really, really hard. So like I said, the first one I would employ would be the small pot with a circular hole in the top. So just flip it up, fill your pellets in, close it down. Now very important, when you go to ship out, make sure that you dunk the pellets under the water in the pot. Got little slots in the side of the pot here, allows the water to come out. So when you actually get out to where you're feeding, you can tap them in knowing that every single pellet is still in that pot. So that'll be the first pot that I would start on. And then I would gauge a response from that. So if I wanted to make things happen then, that perhaps I've caught a few fish or not caught a few fish, and I need to try and make things happen. The second pot I would employ would be the sprinkle pot. So we've got a pot with some holes in the top of it. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that against the background. Three holes here, four mil pellets would easily come through those. Again, what we do with this one, instead of sneaking our pellets in when we get out there, we rattle them on the surface to try and make a noise to try and draw some fish in. Invariably, that always seems to work. And then the last pot I employ is a small pot with no lid whatsoever. This is for putting little balls of micros in. Now you can marry all these three pots together. Like sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take the top off of one, put the other on the other whilst I'm fishing. Like today now, we've put some balls of micros in and it's drawn some fish in but then also over the top of that I put the other lid back on and we've rattled some four mils in because I think noise today as well has been key to catching some fish we've done a lot of lifting and dropping today where we've lifted the rig out lowering in slowly and indeed lifting the whole rig out as well and laying it out and those fish are watching that bait come back to the, to the deck. So like I said, don't think a one pot does all because it doesn't. Yes, you can use the same pot, but the different lids have different uses. Oh, number four. Well, this is a very good tip and, and one that uh, a lot of people use, but I don't think a lot of people got a, got a lot of faith in it, to be honest with you. And I think they, they try to employ it at the wrong situation in a match. Now, I'm fishing hard pellets today. And yes, I'm fishing a banded hair rig. Doesn't mean I can't put anything else on the hook. I'm going to put everything in a band or pull a band over it or through it. So my next tip is fishing corn skins. On the line that I'm actually fishing hard pellets on. There's certain situations in matches where you're catching some fish and then all of a sudden things go a little bit quiet now that could be down to a big carp coming into the swim and all it's about is getting that carp or that bigger fish to pick out your bait pellets become be, become lost because there's a build-up of pellet on the bottom not all pellets get eaten there will be a build-up so at certain times in the match when you have that lull try this So we got a piece of sweet corn and all we're going to do is pull the insides of it out and then what you have is like a husk. Now that husk is very very strong. You can hook that through the top and flick it past your bait so it comes back on a nice very s slow flutter and very very often I've gone from catching the odd fish, then it's gone quiet, to picking up two or three, if you're lucky, 
bigger specimens down the middle of the match. The other one that I do with corn, and I've never seen anybody else do this to be honest with you, not when I'm on the bank in any case, may get it on a video somewhere, is cutting corn. Now corn can be cut to whatever size you want. Generally I'm fishing four or six mil pellet. Look at that small piece of corn there. That again can be hooked onto your banded hook length and it will pick you up some bigger fish. So my final tip and my number one tip is fishing past your bait. Now a lot of anglers don't fish past their bait. If you've ever done any skimmer fishing you'll know that you catch a lot of skimmers past your bait. Maybe a few inches to a couple of feet or even a meter away and indeed I've caught a meter and a half past my bait at sometimes. It's unbelievable how the fish just seem to know that they hang off your main area of feed. By flicking that bait past, I'm sure that those fish capture that as it's coming down. They see it and they snaffle it. It's won me a lot of money over the years by fishing past my bait. First caught onto it when I fished the Midland circuit. And he was a very good angler that used to do it all the time and I could never work out what he was doing. And I actually drew next to him one day and I found out exactly what he was doing. And from that day on, I've done it myself with a lot of success. Like I said, you haven't got to go way past a couple of inches, maybe a foot or so to start with, see it, gauge the response, and then move further away if you have to. But that is my number one tip for fishing in the cold weather. Give it a go, it's fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed all these little tips, giving away all my secrets now, aren't I? Please don't think that everything is set in stone when you go fishing. If you think it, do it. You don't learn unless you try things. I hope you've enjoyed the day. I certainly have. Please subscribe to the MIDI YouTube channel and hopefully see you on the bank soon.